Welcome everybody, Sunset Content is back, you saw the pickums, and now, Power Rankings, with two of the best Sunset Analysts, the Sunnyside Squeakoons, hey and the Syracuse Snorlax. Mug, howdy howdy, take it away. You know, as the, as the, as the current uh, holder of Sunset Champion, I'm clearly very well versed and, uh, you know, rightful to talk about this league that I'm very a part of. It's true. Our division. Um... So first off, we have the Salt Lake Sand Landits. Um, honestly, so they're first, they're, they're at the bottom, 14th place, but I don't want them to get to Sturge. I, they had to give a forfeit win into Star Raptors. They were sick and under the weather, so they weren't at their best against Kyogres, and then now they're, they're feeling a bit better. They went against a, a really strong opponent in Dawn and made it competitive. You know, it was only a three minus three loss. They have, you know, a somewhat manageable sleep, um, sleep schedule, um, <laughs> schedule, strength of schedule, and Nick gets uh, this week, and then some really like tough testing matchups in like Puma and Teddy Tokyo Teddy Ursa, Scarborough Sceptiles, and then Orlando Magikarps to really see their metal. So we will find out, like, you know, this is the starting point to really see if Salanda, it's you know. Is here to show up, or maybe you know it's too late to start the red engine running. But all in considered, like it's a strong fourteenth place. So, like, uh, like me and Ben said in our pickums, I think this is Salt Lake City's or Salt Lake Slandits aren't going to stay at fourteenth for long. Me and Ben had him favored winning against the Nickets this week, so I think this is just a temporary spot for him. Just having a rough few weeks. Or, or them. I'm not sure about their gender. Her. Uh, her, sorry. I keep doing this. I keep misgendering. Oops. But uh, um, I think this will be a temporary. I think after next week, they're going to jump up a few spots, beating New York Nick Nickets. Um, but yep. they have a, 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 you know, they have a decent team. Nothing really stands out great to me, though. Um, I can see them winning at least in our two matches going forward, but we'll see how they, they can play. The cards are in their hand. Especially for this week. <laughs> Moving on is Metro Boomberstein. Do you want to start it off? So, um, Metro Boomberstein, they really have only gotten to see one match out of them. Um, the first two, they took over, I, I think it was what, the Baton Rouge Yeah. The what? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And um, so we only got to see them play Orlando Magikarps this week, which they got 5 would um, so a rough, rough, rough start. I think uh, they have a very heavy, heavy front team in terms of like the Ogre Pond, Wellspring, Heatran, Blood Moon, Annihilate. Great four mons. Their last few though, a little bit rough. Um, I've uh, Hisuian Avlog. Uh, I've seen a lot of people bring, grabbing this mon th this season. I haven't really seen it work well for any of them so far. Um, Quillfish Hisui being the dark type that you just go be swapping into knockoffs but it's also doesn't want to get knocked off because it's an evil light mon so it kind of works against itself a lot um i don't really see print plup ever coming but in terms of schedule wise they do have an easier schedule they have charleston chestnuts but after that the rest of the season they could potentially turn it around for an easy four and four potentially make playoffs yeah um totally like entirely agree like Metro is picking up some of the slack that uh, was put down, so they don't have the greatest uh, record. They also fought another strong opponent in Magikarp, so, you know, this, some of the stuff it was stacked against them. Um, however, I don't believe she is down on it for the count. Like you, know, like you said, very strong top four. Also, Primarina and Dragonite. I mean, Primarina is a really solid mon, like, just really can hold together a team. And then Dragonite is always a surprise win condition. It did wonderful for me last season in uh, Sunset. So, you know, Metro can really show up and do some damage with Dragonite. Yeah, I think this matchup against Dawn, uh, or Charleston Chestnuts this week, it will be really telling, because even if they lose, if they make it close and make it competitive, that's all that matters. Now we have the New York Nickets. Um, this is a team, a draft, that is once again very kind of like top-heavy centric, where it may not have the most power, but it has a very strong theme, right? Like hazards, 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 hazards. Spend 30 turns just pivoting around, get in the right position. 
And so far, they haven't had the great success. They had a four. Uh, they they lost to Kuma and to Clownbrooks. Clownbrooks is on an undefeated streak, and then Kuma, who is currently a front runner to win it all, and then they had a forfeit win against um, the Bagons before they got rebranded into the Metro Boombursts. So so far, they haven't been able to find their footing, and they also haven't had the same kind of playtime like other players of team, uh, other players because you know maybe if they had the chance to play against Bagon and. They might have done better against Clarenbooks, you know, once they have that more familiarity with their team. With that said, um, team strengths and issues aside, they have a pretty, honestly, made genuinely one of the easiest or best, quote-unquote, um, strength of schedule coming up. They fight Salandits, Minetrix, Spellsprouts, and Star Raptors uh, as the upcoming four teams, and then they face off against Charleston, which, again, will be kind of like a final boss before playoffs, if they so, so do make it. So, like, you know, the teams before him, Caleb is not out. We just haven't seen much of him, right? We He kind of got stumped by Clonbrooks. He kind of got stumped by Tokyo. But there was also just, you know, two just strong-ish teams, right? Like, you know, taking over. Uh, I don't really have much to say outside of we just need to see more from him. I probably agree. Um... He was one of the one of the two or three teams that came up from Neon. Um, he did really well down in Neon, pretty dominating. But I think this difficulty jump for him has kind of been a, a awakening for him. Um, his draft, it's it's like you said, it's hazards, kind of you know swappy around, being bulky. Um, I've seen a lot, a lot across all the divisions. One common theme I'm seeing with a lot of lower end teams is Terra captains. You know, just either being an odd choice or weaker choices. I feel like uh, Terra Superior, I haven't seen work effective yet this season. Maybe uh, Caleb can prove me wrong. Um, yep. Frogadier, he hasn't even brought yet, and I don't know how much use he's going to get out of it. And Terra Flareon, I mean, it's the, the traditional setup is going for the facade guts. Um, whether he does with the other Terras, I'll be, you know, I hope to see something creative come out of it. But, um, Caleb does have one of the, you know, easier schedules. Like you said, he's got Charleston at the end as his final boss, but the rest of his matchups are, you know, are currently winnable. ranked. Yeah, winnable, winnable matches. Um, Salt Lake, like you said, um, it, I we gave gave the uh, favor to the Salt Lake Slandits, but it could go either way. He just has to play around, um, get you know, g getting Goldango in the right spots to sweep. But he's got Manila, he's got Cherry, he's got Toronto, who all have really good teams. Um, but it can all go down down to his play style. So we'll see what he has going forward. But he, otherwise, he does have a really you know solid team, some good offensive threats, a lot of hazards with Dio Speed, Spikes, and Stealth Rocks, all that. So we'll see what he's got going forward. But um, I, he can turn this around easily, make this a four, and, uh, you know, five and four, four or five and three, four and four seasons, still make playoffs. Absolutely. I feel like that's going to be a theme for a lot of this is like there's a, a lot of these teams can still make playoffs. It's not no one's really getting counted out yet. Absolutely. Yeah. Like the like even these are three teams, even with some of the better, like some of the worst differentials that like these can definitely show up. Right. Like because zero and three can turn into five and three. Like that's very important. You're not out until you're out. And moving on, um, I think. I, before I saw it, like, you know, moving on to that, you know, Terra conversation, while I actually think Manila has some good Terra captains, maybe Vickavolt could have been better than Register Steel, but that's like a Nick picky thing. I think, you know, Manila is really showing an issue of the that Terra Sarah Ledge. Terra Sarah Ledge is probably one of, if not the best Terra captain that is available in the PBO as of right now, and you are not living to its full potential with Grass Bug as your types. And it has been showing in your opponents. You haven't had the strongest opponents, but you haven't had the weakest, right? You have very, like, winnable schedule, and, you know, it was up in your hands to be able to win or lose, and you lost by five. I believe there was a forfeit uh, in week two, and then you lost by four against Syracuse. So, I'm very concerned about this team moving forward. While I do have them at 11th, and, you know, with wiggle room to go up or down, I am not super um, convinced that it can go much stronger with the, w the limitations that this team currently has. And that's saying something because I actually think Manila's a really good player. And honestly, before draft, before, you know, just looking at the 14 teams, 
I think most people had Manila as one of the favorites, or at least like, you know, making playoffs, going to be maybe semis, like kind of like, you know, tier player. So it's really weird and really um, interesting to see them so low. And, you know, like I said, you know, they didn't have the easiest schedule, but they didn't have the hardest. Like they had very reasonable matchups. And I think they're really either they've either pigeonholed themselves with a very with their draft and or terror captains or they're just not being able to play to their potential. And that is very jarring because while I have more excuses for the players that, that are below them or even above them, I don't know what excuses I can give Carl um, outside of, you know, maybe they're, you know, they're busy or they don't have, you know, they're getting caught off guard or maybe it's been matchup issues. But outside of that, like, this is genuinely concerning for a player I had, you know, as far as skill goes, had ranked in the top six before the season. So I believe Manila missed out on the draft and got to, uh, he just picked up what was left over. And let me tell you, what was left over, he gra- was some quality stuff, getting Bundle, Ladio, Cerulege, yep. Ceru- Meow Scarada. These are some insane yes. offensive threats that were left on the draft board somehow. Yep. I, I I don't know how, but they were left there. Um, I was talking with a few other people, um, was talking with Valley, uh, Vancouver Valiants because he also has the uh, Terra Cerulege. One thing I would like him to maybe swap out is one of the Terra types. Having both Grass and Bug, they both kind of do something very similar. In terms of resistances um so maybe swapping out one of them for a you know a ghost or something of that or a fairy a steel um just because i see like when my big thing going into our match was cerule edge was going to get hard countered by um my incineroar and looking at his terror types it's it's no matter what he does if he doesn't terror whether he terrors or not you're gonna in a mon like incineroar is gonna beat it so it kind of ha- have it limiting uh, Terra's types in that instance, so I'd like him to maybe swap out one of the two um, for something else, maybe just change it up a bit, see if that'll work. Otherwise, he does have a really good team. Um, maybe it's just something outside, I know he missed missed on week two, um, just, you know, was busy with life, I, I believe he said in one of the chats. Um, so whether or not he was focused for week one and three as well. Um, but in terms of his schedule, he does have really his only tough, tough Matchup looking forward is going to be the Orlando Magic Cards. Everyone else seems to be within that, you know, bottom, bottom five, bottom six of the uh, schedule. So I hate to keep repeating yeah. myself over and over again. This could he could turn this around and easily, make playoffs five and three, like we keep saying over and over again. But when you have Iron Bundle, when you have Latios, Sylveon, he's got setup, he's got bulk, he's got all yeah. the hazards. He's got a good all-around team. Um, so he can turn this around. I, I think, think this will this will be another temporary thing where he's going to move up. Um, Absolutely. I think like I think um, Carl like especially with these first four teams um, or like some of these teams, and we're still not getting there. I think the the story of Sunset or some of the uh, the, the the blunders of some of these Sunset players is currently uh, floundering their Terra captains. You know, not making the most out of what they could. You know, I'm not saying Registeel is not the worst. You know, I think these are good typings. But, you know, that's a secondary Terra Captain. And when your primary Terra Captain is basically, you know, you have options in Grass and Bug. And when you're basically saying, no, I only have one Terra, uh, terra type, you're not making the most of it. You're becoming very one-dimensional in your Flash Fire builds. And, you know, even if you have a strong team, which, again, you know, fair all credit, you, you came in late and you picked up a genuinely demonic team for what you had available. Somehow you even picked up Dawn Fan, which is, might be the most questionable thing on this board, being able to pick up after the, the fact. You, you know, you made the best with what you got, but I think, you know, what, you, you're, what you're lacking in is a true strong Terra Captain to really put you over the edge. I think that's all you really need is, like, take the time, just take the transaction... Let yourself have a Terra Fairy, Sarah Ledge. Trust me, in my match, my my match prep against Valiance this week, that Terra Fairy is what is causing me the most grief. Not not a could be bug. Moving on, we have the Toronto Star Raptors. Now we have we're coming into a you know we, we're coming to the same situation. They're in the exact same situation as New York Nickets. Um. um where they have a win uh, due to a forfeit, and then they have lost two games. Their two games are, well, 
two two players that have two teams that haven't shown up yet into Charleston and Tottenham's. So they they are they are a bit stronger up. They're also their losses. I mean, they're currently it's only minus five, and you know it's two two minus fourteen games. It's not the worst. I will say it was very hard for me to put them much higher because of a few things, but the main one was actually like the, you you decided to go all in on this snow part, right? You went on Alola Ninetales. I think dropping uh, Primarina and Dragalge is a big question mark for me. You're getting rid of... So I understand the Dragalge part. You know, you don't need a second dragon. You still need a ground of poison. So Dragalge just kind of fills in a role that maybe, you know, you could have had somewhere else, right? Like the Quillfish is technically the better fit. I do not know or if I agree with this Alola Ninetales, especially over Primarina, because it makes your team a lot more one-dimensional, where Primarina gave you options. In saying that, because your team's a bit more one-dimensional, it is a lot easier to pilot, it is much easier to use, and with great Tuskback's caliber, they are both absolute lovers of, of Aura Veil. And even with that, you still have special attackers that can still abuse it with like Raikou, PZ, and Sinistra. You fight a strong opponent in Nico or the Orlando Magikarps. So even if you lose it, as long as you put up a good fight, that's all that matters. And because I do believe you have some winnable matchups. Now, unlike the teams before this, I do believe you have some of a stronger schedule, right? You fight Nico or the Orlando Magikarps, you fight Tokyo Teddy Ursus, and you fight the Snowpoint Zoroas. But even if you lose all accordingly, you should still end three and five. And depending on your differential, you might be able to, may, might be able to squeeze off playoffs. That main thing is sh uh, show is your showing. How strong can you play? Maybe you, maybe you can pull off a win against Orlando or Snow Points or Tokyo. I think it's all in your hands. You have such strong power in Great Tusk and Excalibur who can just even if you're in the back foot, come in and win games. I think this is a very much do or die week for you. Because even if you lose to Orlando, you know, no one is going to think of you other, like think of you less otherwise, like if you lose. I think it's a big thing to try and lose uh, with two minus two than it is to say lose with minus five. And I'm not saying to play to lose. I'm saying to just give it your all, have confidence. You actually have a decent team. And while I have some question marks about it, I actually have faith in you. You know, you're one, two, only minus five. You know, you still have quite a few transactions left. I like, you know, you've always been a very stable player. I, I, I believe you got this. What do you think? So I used his team a lot in mocks against uh, Tottenham for a week or so. Um, it has a lot of, uh, I found a lot of fun with it in terms of like being able to do setup. I think Terra Porygon Z is a Z cat is a terror or not. Yeah. Terra captain that a lot of people are uh, sleeping on. I really yep. enjoyed using this mod, being able to tear a ghost and just shoot off shadow balls. And you know, you have nasty plot. Porygon Z is a surprisingly fast mod. I think a lot of people yep. think it's slower than it actually is, but it hits nasty. Um, having ghost and normal, mo unless, it, unless it's Hisui and Zoroark, you're pretty much almost hitting everything. Yep. Um, you know, try it. I wish it was a hyper voice instead of a tri attack. I mean, yep. tri attack still, you know, it's 80 power. You can even do some some fun things with like hyper beam and stuff, especially as like a final move slot if you're gonna have be your end uh, end game sweeper maybe, or if it comes or down breaker. to a one v one. Yeah, or breaker. Um, I love Sinistra. Sinistra is a fun mod to do. Um, you know, you obviously got the shell smash, you got strength sap, leech seed. He's got a lot of good mons that I enjoy using. You know, Raikou, um, you got the Lola Nalan Tales, Bax Calibre connection. It's the one thing I found on his team that's kind of lacking is there's not a, you know, a great like special defense mon mm -hmm. that I was trying to trying to figure out something. Um, you can try run Assault Vest and stuff like that. You can go maybe a special defense uh, Sinistra or, or Ninetales in that aspect. But I feel like it's just lacking a little bit of bulk that I'd like mm -hmm. to see. I mean, he's got, I say that, but he has two steel types. To say a, a team that has two steel types is lacking bulk is, I feel like I, I that's a sin. But nope. that's one thing I notice is just kind of like, it's lacking that sustainability and that bulk that I'd like to see from other teams. Um, same, this team has really one Terra captain. Um, I mean, you could try stuff with Probo Pass. I tried, tried. I tried for 
two or three different teams to try and get this terror captain working um maybe it just it's above my skill level um but this is probably one of the first team we've seen where i see a terror captain and terra porygon z that really stands out and i mm-hmm. think that with the amount of different setup he has and the setup he can do if he can start catching people with that setup especially behind an aurora veil he can have a lot of he can turn that differential around real quick and something that like you know is very like very powerful about this team is that PZ behind setup behind the veil especially can you know run very bulky you can go max hp max special attack for example to try and set up agilities and nasty plots and you'll take those hits and then you can just start firing off faster than everything and you can take those hits and everything is really strong um yeah honestly to your to what you're saying outside of like av and some very special things your your special defense is literally just setting up veil and assault best raikou because i believe it's like 100 or 115 special defense or something like that i think it's his special defense is fine right if i remember correctly um maybe it's like a 90 um but like you're but you you're stunting your Raikou if you're yeah, trying to how, use it how as an AV mode. You really want to just go full attack Raikou. Yeah. You know, Raikou is one of those mods that can get roar, can have that phasing and stuff like that. Yep. On um, on mind. So to go full offensive, it's just it feels almost limiting. The team has a lot of setup, but I think as far as like just coming out with actual stat sticks, like um which I think a lot of teams need as just as like a foil or as a as a glue piece this team is kind of lacking just pure stats and yeah. it's like obviously they have great tusk back caliber i mean those are as if, if offensively you have all the stats in the world but defensively i think that's where you're kind of lacking if i was but to say all, all, yeah go ahead yeah but all in all i mean it's fine like this is this is paldea dax um defense is not as nearly as strong as offense sadly um but even with that, like like this team can definitely work. You can obviously just go max HP, max special defense, probe a pass if you really need that spadef. Like there's definitely workarounds with this team you know, to sharp its flaws. I if I have to say one last thing, I feel like it's always a sin if you're gonna have a body press user be a terra captain for it to not have terra fighting. I feel like it's a <laughs> yeah. sin. Um, if you don't plan on using any more transactions for the season, Toronto, I would probably swap out one of your terras for fighting, just because. Yep. It just feels wrong otherwise. I'm thinking maybe that electric. That electric kind of seems weird. Yeah. I agree. All right, we can move on. On to the Cherry Hill Hill. Bellsprouts. I don't have too much to say about this team. I mean, you won against Totem, um, so that's, you know, really good. Uh, it's a good win. I mean, they still uh, they still have not shown up yet. Um, you but you then, which was a plus five, but then you lost by five to Syracuse, and then by five by Geo or Scarborough, and so you're you're at a minus five. Honestly, still not that bad, and you know, but currently, you know, that that worries me about your stability as a player moving forward, especially, you know, with a very do or die matchup against clown books because now we get to really see you know your side and like where you and clown books both lie and then you still have magic carps and snow point ahead of time and maybe i've rebounded nickets and or manila when by the time you get to them so your schedule has a story to tell for you but in saying that um you're you seem like a very coin flippy player um you know you either win hard or die hard and while that might look good for defense differential if you win that you, when you lack that stability, if you do make it to playoffs, that is going to may that may genuinely become your downfall, or it might be the you know you might be the hero of the season. Ignoring you know moving on from that, I do like your team. Um, you do have three grass types in a generation where grass is not the hottest of topics. One of which is a terror captain. So, I believe now I, through you know. I'm going to infer that you're using Wo Chen more as a dark type than a grass type, and then Ogre Pond maybe is a, more of a rock type. But it is a bit of a weird, clunky mess when you have three Terra captains, especially when Appleton might not always want a Terra and things like that. You become somewhat predictable. 
Especially because your team is kind of like, you just kind of click Ice Beam into your team, and your only two answers to it are Slowbro and Chandelure. And Chandelure doesn't always want to come, and then Slowbro becomes a very, you know, it has to do everything and doesn't have a pivot move like the other slow uh, kings. But enough about negatives. I, I just wanted to get that off my chest because, you know, look at the positives. You have Valiant and Raging Bolt. I don't know if I have to look at the rest of their team. You have a Valiant and a Raging Bolt. You have one of the best fairies, if not the best fairy, and one of the best dragons. Probably not the best dragon, but one of the best dragons and one of the best electro types in Raging Bolt. Two giant piles of stats that can work with or without setup. You have Corviknight and Clodsire for your fat. Uh, Chandler, which, you know, depending on speed tiers, depending on matchups, is a genuine threat. Just comes in and just destroys everything. Slurbo is a, such a strong mon. And then two really good secondary captains in Ride on Appleton, which can come in and really put on pressure uh, defensively or offensively on the Ride on's case. So I do like what your team can do. I do think there's some redundancy in your team. But ignoring that, like, even if you just bring, like, you know, Iron Valiant, Corviknight, Cloudside, Raging Bolt, Slowbro, and then every single game, and then your six mon is just by random chance, your team looks really, really good. And I think you can beat Coyote Clombrook. I think you could beat Nico, depending on you're playing on a good day. I do believe your team is that of hot shit. Like not, like, not negatively, but, like, it is hot stuff. It is genuinely a really good team. I just genuinely worry that you... If, you, if your failings to succeed with the team now... How will you be able to pivot that moving forward? I agree on that same kind of thought process of this is not a the 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 ship has no holes in it. This is a solid ship. It's the captain that's yep. causing some of these issues. And not saying you know, not trying to be disparaging. Um, going into our matchup, you know, having the three grass types plus the terra grass chandelier. Um, you have a big, big ice weakness, which, sadly for him, when you, you looked at like my team where we got Sandslash and Kiram, you need to keep uh, Slowbro and Corviknight alive. And I remember during my match with him, he let he kind of just let Kiram kill Slowbro. I don't know if he was not expecting the freeze dry or something like that, or he thought it was going to be physical Kiram, but um, just letting the Slowbro die and then letting Corviknight get chipped over and over again. Um, Plus, mm -hmm. the Appleton set not really doing anything. I feel like it's more of just like, kind of just got to get into the, uh, you know, the fighting game training room and start working on some combos. Once you get some of your play cleaned up, you have definitely one of the scarier teams. I definitely don't want to play against this team again. Yep. And, uh, you know, if I see you in the playoffs, it is what it is. But it definitely is one of those uh, scary teams. But having such a huge huge grass or ice weakness um is gonna be gonna be an issue going forward um so it's gonna be very matchup dependent for you know uh who you're gonna be facing Slowbro is almost gonna have to come almost every, any week you do see any ice and yep. corviknight um, just learning how to deal with that but like like you said mug you got a valiant you got a bolt it's you even though it's this team is like fat as hell, you have you know, not a lot of offensive <laughs> pressure. The offensive pressure you have, man, oh man, it 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 it's can be you know dirty. And plus, you still got the ogre pond quarterstone. Yes, it's probably the weakest of the ogre ponds, but it's still you know rock, off, offensive uh, rock ivy cudgel still gonna hurt, yep. um, especially for teams that aren't you know that are rock weak. So, it this team is. Pretty solid over on, like I said, just a big ice weakness. But otherwise than that, if Cherry Hill can, you know, I would try and I don't know who he, if he's been mocking with anyone or anything like that. If he needs a mock partner, let me know. But you have a team that um, is scary, and it just comes down to just comes down to your play, man. Yep. Uh, yeah, we don't say any of this stuff to disparage or like diss on or you know on on the person or an individual like themselves we say all this stuff because you know we want we want to just give a different perspective on like how you can play better because all of your team like everyone that we've seen so far and moving forward you all have play in teams and abilities to genuinely just go the rest of the season undefeated even regardless of your schedule it's just the onus is on you like there has been no standouts in either direction and well at least not negatively and so 
I think it's very important, you know, just, you know, hear what we're saying as, as far as your team is concerned and as your play is concerned, but not about you as the person, because all of you, you know, people, part of PBO, either is watching or playing, partaking, um, now future or present, are all just amazing. And, you know, so there is no, nothing about this is personal. It is all purely just based on your, on Mons. We're just playing here to play Mons. Especially when you're in the Sunset Division, where it's a Thunderdome, everyone's so <laughs> a lot more closer. Where you yep. look at like Neon, they got a bottom three and a top three. Stargazer, you've got a bottom uh, four and a top four. It's there, there's clear, clear tiers of like qual, you know, people above them with stronger teams. Sunset, yep. it it is the Thunderdome. Sunset was genuinely like I had to start like pulling up games and being like very objective like okay but this person won on these many turns and whatnot because it really like a lot of these teams could be anywhere like totem crew uh, coming up here next we could put them up another two or three spots or maybe maybe even lower like it's really hard with a lot of these teams to just put pinpoint exactly where they're at we try our best but we're down we, you know we're human we will make mistakes and especially as you're saying it is the thunderdome like we this week we have one person at number one next week they could be fifth we don't know what's going to happen because it is crazy and that's what makes it so much fun it might be the most fun region so on to on to my mocking partner tottenham um he had a very successful bronzong stored power sweep um <laughs> this week making bronzong the sixth kill leader that is the, the kill leaders for sunset are honestly insane but um <laughs> Yeah, six six bronze song. Whew. But this is a uh, this is a very um, scary team in terms of like if he can catch you with a setup, you're you're gonna be eliminated. He's got the uh, you mm -hmm. know. Ever, there's been a lot of uh, successful stored power sweeps. I feel like this year in all of the yep. divisions, um, we saw the Dunsparce up in Stargazer. Um, I think we saw like a Metagross or something down in um, Neon. I think. Or was that also Stargazer? I'm not sure. But either way, uh, <laughs> Bronzong store power. Um, he's got some really nasty Terra captains. I think all of them are ha do a really good job in terms of value. None of them are like the crazy, crazy uh, Terra captains like you see with like Cerulege or, you know, the ones that are really dominating the story. But he does have some really good ones. Lilligant, um, obviously being the sweet, uh, Sleep Powder, Quiver Dance, Muck being able to just be the grounded poison, but be bulky as well and be able to uh you know swap around its type um does muck get body press i don't believe so okay if it got body press that would actually kind of be nasty because i know, I know it can... swallow does but i'm also just a, a lover of swallow lot um you continue i will figure that out yeah. but um the only reason i asked that because i was like i know it gets acid armor um, it does not get body press. Ah, that's depressing. It gets strain punish and brick break, though. Gotcha. Because if it got body press, I'd be like, wait a second. Muck, muck body press tech actually seems kind of nasty. Um, <laughs> he's got Smeargle, so he has every single uh, hazard you can imagine. Um, yep. So it's going to be based on his matchup, this, uh, matchup every week. I feel um, his week into Tokyo, he's probably not going to be bringing spikes or webs just because Tokyo has so many... Um, flying mons or levitate mons probably going to be bringing stealth rock if he does bring smeargle at all um, yep. he has a team that you you look at it and it's not not in the traditional normal heavy hitters but it's still really dangerous heavy hitters dark cry thunderous t iron hands latias manaphy a lot of setup um things that can do bulk things that can be offensive he has a big swiss army knife team and that even though it might not stand out as like, you know, these like, you know, Iron Valiant threats or some of these other mons like Spectrier, Bundle, that like you clearly stand that stand out and you know are going to be dangerous. He has a team that will be under the radar. And I think he's definitely can, if he keeps up the same trend of just kind of catching people off guard and being able to sweep, um, he's going to continue climbing. I feel like he just had a rough week one matchup against Cherry Hill. But ever since then, it's just been uh, nothing but climbing up for him and uh, he's going to continue this hot streak he does have one of the harder schedules obviously he has um kuma this week he has myself in two weeks and then he's got Clonbrook, scarborough and he ends off on metro boom bursting which 
So it's like, I'm it's, tell. yeah. So it's going to be, you know, he's going to have the hardest now, and then it's going to like maybe slow It'd down a little bit. Yep. But, uh, but he's got to get through these next few weeks first. Yeah. Um, this is a team, like, you know, from my perspective, that really thought about Terra Captains last or like Terra Captains were an afterthought however whether it be by coincidence or by pure like this was a plan he did get really good terror captains i have used uh, lilligan before as both a terror captain and not terror captain i think it is heavily slept on um i am not the, i prefer swallowed over muck but still like it's still a muck right like you can't complain and then bronze song right these are very like defensive and or utility mons and because they can terror they can sometimes get out their weakness to let them actually use the utility now that normally might become a problem when you want to use your terra captains to be offensive but then you look at the team you're the pokemon that aren't the terra captains you have a dark rye a thunderous an ursaluna an iron hands a Latias, and a manaphy i will say and only because, um, you know, if I've been negative so far, I should be negative about some, you know, something. My only genuine concern about this team is that its special threats are all fast or fast-ish, and its physical threats are all slow. And there is a genuine liability in that because it lets you know how to, you know, properly EV. You know, like, okay, I, I can make my physical wolves you know, maybe a bit faster because all his physical walls are very slow. And then, you know, with my special walls, I don't have to worry about speed. I don't have to try and, you know, my assault vest Pokemon with base 895 speed or something like that. I just won't put any speed in because all of his special attackers are fast and so on and so forth. So it does have some liability. And I don't know if it's even worth fixing because this team is, like like you said, a Swiss army knife. It, it, it does so many different things. You can see so many different Pokemon coming. And honestly, his play has been very good. I mean, into the Minetrix, into the Toronto Star Raptors, he, he comes in, he has executes plan. Even his loss, uh, even though it was a five zero loss, if my memory serves correctly, he didn't just come in and just fall over because of something he did per se. He was just kind of caught off guard. He, Cherry Hill did the match right, and you know it was a tough matchup. But like, honestly, you know, fair play to Hoot Hoots. I I genuinely think this is an up and coming player who will rise. Um, it is just hard because he may. If I had to guess based on current um, biases and/or power level, Totenum, you may take a hit in power rankings just because you're for next two weeks. You know, Tokyo and Syracuse. Now you might win and then shock us all. But if if it goes the way of predictions of losing to Tokyo and then losing to Syracuse, your power rank, your, your ranking might stay the same, or you might lose. You know, lower one. I don't want that to let you get you down. At the end of the day, I think you are going to make playoffs, or you should. You, you, you're a strong player. You have a he you know, strong head on your shoulders. I think you have the right team to do it, and you know maybe you can pull off the miracle win against Tokyo. Maybe you know you surprise your mocking partner with something that you've been holding close to your chest, and beat Sierra Cruz, and then and maybe Clown Book, you know, just falls and fumbles to you, and you just win out the rest of the season, finish seven and one. But if you don't. You know, you do lose, regardless if it's by heavy or by, you know, close match. Don't let that disparage you. Do, you know, just keep on trucking. You have the right team. You have the right play. You are a solid player. You got this. Mm, moving on. Oh, it's you. I feel, uh... I'll, bite, I'll bite my tongue on this one. <laughs> I'll step um, in. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. So this is a team Back that, if uh, if I remember correctly, before season when we did the preseason power rankings, that I was both liking and disliking at the same time. Mostly because one, a team with a theme will, is very good. A lot of people will just kind of draft Pokemon just to hit quotas and then not really think about how the the, the team interacts with each other. And on the other side, people will just try and try too hard to force a thematic, whether it be weather or a certain way of play style, like stall or hyper offense, and then, you know, maybe miss out on the big picture. I will say, after seeing you play, after seeing this team operate, and honestly taking some time to look at this team, I do like it more. Because, yes, you are very thematic in the sense that you have... You have the Snowmon. You have Chili Reception Slow King, that is Regenerator. And then you have Kiram and Sandslash to both abuse it. 
But it's not just that. It, you have two regenerator mods, a fast and a slow one, so you can go back and forth and heal up. And you're not even that. Still, you still have more options. You have Incineroar for Intimidate, slow pivoting with uh, parting shots, knockoff, like the premier knockoff mod. Um, you have screens with Morgrim if you if you, if you want extra support. But you also have Zorark Blastoise. Blastoise is probably one of, if not the versatile water type. Probably the most versatile water type in the game. Do you want it to be your sweeper? Physical mon? Special mon? Defensive mon? Utility? Spinner? Fuck it, throw an assault vest on it. See what happens. It is the premier water um, uh, utility mod. It does everything you need it to. It is the Swiss Army Knife water type. And then Hydrapple, a third water uh, a regenerator mod, doesn't always, like, that's not always why you have to use uh, um, rege it as a regenerator core, because it is a terror captain. A, unlike some of the other terror captains, this, these are really good terror captains. Alolan Sandslash, on his own, may not be the best Terra Captain, but it is your secondary Terra Captain, and you have Snow. When you put those two and two together, it can come as, in as a secondary, late-game, crazy mm -hmm. mod. Also, I do like, I think um, at the beginning of the season, I was a bit of a downer on the Terra Steel. After some thought, I actually don't dislike it, because you already have enough offense. With the Electric and Ice, you have all the coverage you need, depending on the matchup. Going with Terra Steel lets you have just a pure Steel type. You get rid, you know, you, you you get rid of some of your quad weaknesses. You're not weak to rock, you know, you're not neutral to rock anymore. You just get to be a pure Steel tank. I like it for that reason, because if you're coming in with a pure Steel tank, that because you come in with an idea that this is not the uh, Sand Slash show. Sand Slash is here to put set up the star, rest of the star. And other than that, you have Swampert. You can literally play a game of just. Pass the pancake of Slow King, Chili Reception into Tornadus, U turns into Incineroar, which parting shots into Swampert, which flip turns into Hydrapple, which then gets a kill. And then you can just do that over and over again. I am genuinely loving this team more and more. I look at it. I think you lost to a good player in Zoroas. I can't remember if it was a loss or a forfeit. There's been so many. It was a loss. It was, uh, it was a loss. It was the I, I let Iron Leaves set up. Ah, okay. Yes. That is a blunder I think every single person has made from the moment Gen 9 came out at least once. I've done it too. I think everyone has done it. So I don't think you have to worry about that too much. Um, and then you handedly beat Bell Sprouts and you beat Matrix. And I think uh, Geo is going to be a matchup that I, you can't prep for. And I can't predict because you could come in, beat him 6 0 and just in 11 turns, or you could be there for 210 turns. With one Pokemon dead uh, from God. either side. God, I fucking I, hope not. <laughs> yeah, I, I cannot stress to you. God cannot, not God himself cannot predict your match. I cannot help you. You could be there for 10 turns in and out, win or lose. You could be there for, for 300 turns, both of you, like, trying to find a way to end it. It's like, yeah, there's... It's definitely going to be an interesting matchup. Um, Probably the yep. weakest matchup for my Glow King. You know, mm -hmm. obviously having a... Having a Spectre and a Dragapult, which I don't know why we let him do that. But as yeah. soon as I, as soon as we were in the draft and I saw that, I was like, hmm, let me grab Horowark real quick. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and then and then you're like, okay, but that's fine. And then he has Ting Lu. And then like, oh, got it. Yeah, this so, is a, uh, hmm, my Glow King is not looking great. So, but not to say, you know. Matchups aren't everything. Like, you know, yeah. I'm sure you'll figure out a way. And that is the cool thing about your team. Your team has the way to solve that problem. Yes, you, it is not going to be a pretty matchup. And if you win, it is not going to probably be the prettiest of wins that you probably will have this season. However, I think your team can do it. You have a strong primary terror captain in Hydrapple and a strong secondary terror captain in a Senselesh that can do both offense and defense. And I like that. I like how you didn't just go pure offense. Um, outside of that, I think you have a really interesting schedule. You have been playing well. You've been prepping well. I think you have a really good schedule to really showcase your strength because you fight Scub Tiles, Hoot Hoots, so two players who kind of in the middle who really want to make a name for themselves. So, you know, winning or losing against them really matters a lot. Then you fight Charleston, who is really up there, is one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to win alongside Tokyo. You'll also fight Tokyo as a final boss. And sandwiched in between that 
is currently the number one seed um, of standings, undefeated Clownbrooks. Uh, where they might end up, uh, you know, where they might show up in week seven is time to tell. But that that is important, right? You have a schedule where a lot of people could see the schedule and just lose out five, right? And I believe because that is a schedule where like you can just go zero five and you know there's nothing someone can do about it. And I think you might actually have a good matchup into, you know, skill wise a good matchup into all of them, or at least a chance to win against all of them. I think that's really. On, the onus is definitely on you um, to really show up that even if you lose, to make the most out of it. Um, play well, prep well, draft well. You have dra- you've played well, you have drafted well, and you have prepped well. Um, I d- there's not much more I can say. If the only reason why you're not higher is because the top six, the six above you, is there for one reason or another. Um, yeah. And then we'll go on to the first reason. So. Ooh, three and oh, and only what? This is six? six? Yep. Ooh, this is. You're I'm gonna, defeated. You're the number one standings overall. You got some defended to do here. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, this is so. your soapbox. <laughs> this one um, for me, yeah, this one might look controversial, you know, on the surface. But for me, it's actually a very, like, Honestly, it was kind of it was just it is nothing to do with Chrome books. You know, they came in halfway through and they, they came in the season. They didn't even get to play week one. You know, they got they were given a forfeit win and their current wins are against the 14th and a 12th seed. So even including their forfeit win, which is against the 13th seed, their wins are against the 14th, the 13th and the 12th. As far as we know, they could be the 11th best team, and we have not been able to tell because their schedule, strength of schedule up to this point have been so weak. In saying that, though, I believe they are much higher than just 11th because their win, when they did play, their wins are a 6-0 and a 5-0. To me, that shows they're winning at least pretty dominantly. And the fact that they have a theme in rain and they're making it work to an extent, is really impressive. They have Rillaboom to kind of shore up some of their ground weaknesses in DNC, Sneasel, and Archaladon. <laughs> and Pre, Terra, and Nacklestack, I think is, is actually a good call. Like, you may not have... And then, obviously, ter- um, pairs with Sneasler. You have a lot of different synergies going. I like it. I just... I need to see you fight someone who is really shown their meat and potatoes of a player, right? Like... Cherry Hill is going to be an interesting, you know, st- uh, t- you know, tapping off point. You know, Cherry Hill is currently ninth. You know, it's still not the you know, in the bottom half of the power rankings. But win or lose against that, like if you win against him, I think the real matchups will start to show up the moment you hit week five, because week five is Zora was, and then you have Totenum, and then Syracuse, and then G like is Scarborough. So I think you have a f- easy half, uh, first half of the split, but the second half is really where it shows. If you are here to play, or if you've been getting "quote unquote" lucky, and that's kind of why you're sixth, and it's not necessarily because I'm doubting you. It's just because of your strength of schedule, and we need to see two more weeks of you to really pinpoint how strong of a player you were. Like you said, um, schedule is one of the biggest things that put them here. This is like the Philly Philly Eagles schedule the last two seasons where it's just <laughs> been dog poo poo, easy wins, and then they want to brag about being a good team. But uh, besides <laughs> on sports topic, um, I want to point out this team, ju- like he just picked up Pelipper uh, week three. So now he's fully committing to the rain pr- uh, prior to this. Um, it wasn't like a fully rain team going into the draft. Um, Clonbrook, honestly, I know what a lot of the initial reactions was like, kind of like, was he trolling or not? Um, obviously, the meme of grabbing a Lola Mola in the first round is still prevalent in every division. Yep. I think, almost every division. I think. Um, yep. He picked up Lola Mola, got Lecky, got Sneasler, got Archaladon. Um, so he's got a good, like, especially Sneasler, Archaladon, uh, Reggie Lecky. He's got a good core right there. Um, he's got one of the best fairy types that is available in uh, in the pa- 
Paldea decks, yeah. Paldea decks in Diancy, um, especially as a Terra as well. I feel like it's one of those mons that a lot of people, you don't really think about how dangerous this mon is. But it'll come in and then, you know, the value of it, killing one, two, three mons. Um, he's got, he can get, he got the terrain uh, in Willowboom to help set, help the Sneasler set up with the Unburdened Sweeps. Um, some of the, t he, I like the Terra Diancy, the Terra Mudstale and the Terra Knackle Stack. Um, they're both fine Terras for what they are, I suppose. They're nothing that really stands out too, too crazy. Um, they they kind of do what they got to do. Yep. So it's not really a thing that's going to be, you know, like we said with uh, some of the, uh, with Tottenham's team, it's not really offensive Terras. They're more defensive, but this is even more so than uh, Tot in Tottenham's case in terms of like, the Mudsdale and the Knackle stack, and even the Ancy is not really terroring for offensive purposes either. So it's all defenses terras, which always kind of hurts a little bit because you always want to see at least mm -hmm. one of your terras to try and be that offensive threat. Um, it's definitely. Ooh, I will no say I do like the stamina uh, terra fighting body press. This is a terra fighting body press mon. Yeah. On the Mudsdale. I mean, uh, anytime you see bo a body press mon, it's terra. It's. It it's I'm I'm it's gonna be in the Bible now, Bible of PBO that it's gotta have Terra <laughs> fighting. <laughs> you know, Soaring has spoken. But uh it's definitely yep. an interesting team. It's probably the most unique team uh in Sunset. Yep. Um I, I mean, would like to see what he's what he's gonna what he's gonna do these next few weeks. I think me and Ben had Cherry mm -hmm. Hill winning him and ending his winning streak this week, um, in our predictions. But we'll see. Let's see if he can prove us wrong. It can go either either way. Um, just because of how fast this team is as well. And Sneasler and Reggie Lackey with the Unburdened. So we'll see how he does. Um, not to throw him under the bus too much, but if uh, I think he can either surprise us or he might have a rough season going forward. But he is, a, he is one of the guys that dropped down from Stargazer, so he can be... Um, he's got the experience. He's got the... Yep. Let's see if you can climb back up to uh, Stargazer. My biggest, uh, before we move on, I just wanted to touch on it because the more I looked at this team, the more the issue became blaring to me, is that your speed tiers are genuinely, uh, in the best, nicest way I can put it, depressing to look at. And, and I say this because, yes, you have Reggie Lucky Sneezer. When I, if I were to look into this matchup, i say, all right, I'm not even going to try and speed creep either of those Pokemon. And that's not my problem. I'm just going to go bulky instead. So, all right, so your two fastest Pokemon, not a problem. Our Chalidon has actually, uh, has a, I believe it's base 80 speed or something along those lines, 85. I'll get you. Um, if that's the case, it, I mean, yeah, it has a good base speed, and sometimes you might have to speed creep it if you're like a base 80 mon or something of the like. But for the most part, our Chalidon, even when it's doing the Electro Shot sets with Pelipper, you're not going max speed because you like that bulk. It's going to be uh, 85. 85, perfect. And that's the same thing as Rillaboom. And so you're basically, you're going from 200 to 120 with Unburden. So it's kind of like an outside of when you, unless you can like um, ha um, phase it, uh, that speed uh, is not something you ever want to try and obtain. And then two APS 85 mons, and then everything is just either super slow or it's a prankster Sableye. And when you have that, you just say, okay, if I have a base 90 mon, I... You, you could speed it, uh, uh, try to speed creep Rillaboom, or if you just don't care, you just go adamant modest, adamant or and or modest, and you just say, maybe speed doesn't matter. Maybe I just go full bulk, because if that is a full speed Rillaboom, I'm going to want that bulk to live that grassy glide or something, or, or that wood hammer. And so anything that's base uh, 90 to 100, you're going to want to um, put in a lot of bulk, Teams, if I if I saw this, I wouldn't even bother with trying to scarf my mons for the most part. I would just say, this is the easiest way to just, all right, if my Pokemon is base 100, I'll make it faster than base 85, make it really nice and bulky, and now I am able to take on your fast mons, bully your slow mons, and then your half-fast mons can't even, like, outrun or outgun me. And that is something that's very concerning when your speed tiers are this... Um, sporadic and yes you have very nice fine fat pieces and offensive pieces but a balanced team may genuinely completely and utterly stonewall you so with the pelipper you still have some transactions i see a lot of swift sim mounts still available yep uh floats still available yep um so you got some good 
if you want to try and fix the speed issue, you do have a lot of Swift swimmers available to take advantage of that. Kingdra is still yep. on the board. Um, and not, not that it's a Swift swimmer, you got Paldea and Taurus. So if you really do want to lean heavily into the rain, which has its pros and cons, obviously we, we talked earlier when you... Um, when you lean too much into a gimmick, sometimes it pigeonholes you. But yep. there is a there is a uh, things available here to help out if you did want to go more heavy into the rain. All right, moving on to the top five. Snowpoint Temple Zoroas. This is a team. That I believe had some transactions. They are not currently listed, but I remember them having like a Mimic and some other ones like that that I uh, really remember making me dislike this team a lot. Um, but now is kind of shoring up and looking a bit better. Um, yeah, you have very stable Pokemon in Iron Treads, Petrant, you know, good Wincons and Greninja. And while you might not have any like ban, like, you know, Sham Wow, like something that really wows a Pokemon, uh, like wows you as a Pokemon, like an Iron Valiant or even a Dragonite to an extent. You have Greninja, you have very strong, stable Pokemon, and worst comes to worst, you have Ditto to steal their, you know, crazy Pokemon. I'd like it. You've been playing well. You got a win against Syracuse and Tokyo, two really good players. You've had a strong strength of schedule of Syracuse, Geo, Tokyo, and now you're kind of going into. You kind of have a bit of a leeway with Manila into Clonbrook, maybe, mayhaps. With only, really, uh, Orlando being able to check you, assuming that you keep at the same skill level that you've been playing. So, realistically, you might, assuming all things go to plan, you might finish the rest of the season 7-1, and 6-2. and two. I mean, you beat your two stronger competitors in Syracuse, and, again, Tokyo is a huge win for you. I think you've been playing well, and while I don't believe your draft is the strongest, your play has been, and your prep has been. I think that's very important for you, and I honestly, like, I don't have much more to say because you just, you you have the team, you've been playing it well, you've been prepping it well, you just, I, there's not much for me to say. It's just, yeah, you're, you're, you're good. <laughs> you got this. You're, the only reason why you're not higher is because something above the the top four teams is pushing them to that extra level or to an extent it's honestly you just kind of in the same jumble all of you can be kind of in the just top five in any order depending on the day but yeah just good player good team good prep um me and ben touched a lot on his uh matchup this week with manila um i think he's gonna have a lot of issues this week because what is his bundle counter that yep. is the freeze dry is freeze dry kind of goes crazy um petron's really the only thing and even then petron's not going to want to stay in and take multiple hydro pumps yep um unless you go full full special defense so i think he might drop after this week just because if manila plays it right yep. i think manila can get the win um he's got i think this is probably one of the weeks he might have to bring ditto just because of how the the amount of setup manila has yep so i think you know just basing this off our pickums um, he might drop starting next week, but who, hopefully he could prove us wrong. Like you said, he's had very good play so far with the mods he has. I think just the one thing that's hurting him most is just like, like you said, it's an overall decent team, but it's got, you know, a few, few things here or there. Your dark type being Greninja, which is not really yep. the the dark type that you kind of want taking those knockoffs and stuff. You're not, you're not using it mm -hmm. in, in that bulky aspect. Um, but he does have, you know, treads. He has Petrant. Um, Moltres can uh, kind of can be a good wall, but it's also pigeonholed with the item it has to bring, pretty much. Um, he's got the Iron Leaves, which I, you know, I, I can't say a thing. It caught me off guard. It's one of those kind of skill check mons, similar to like the the stored power mons that we keep talking about in all these divisions. Um, it kind of just checks to see if you know how to counter it. Uh, which was Zaw, Zaw was big on uh, talking about was just basically like it's it's a mon that's there to check your skill level. I don't know. Um, he still got how many more transaction points left? I think four, three or four. four. Yeah. 
I'm not sure. So I, remember he uh, got Mim he, I know he at least got rid of Mimikyu for Granbull, and I believe they're not the same points. So he had to get rid of something. I think the Terrakion is also new, if I recall. So at least two. He's at least, at least he has at least used two transactions. Okay. I mean, Mimikyu. It hasn't really been a mon that was. It was great in its debuting generation. Ever since then, it's kind of fallen off a little bit. I'm not sure what the Grand Bull is going to be doing much in a lot of his matchups, just because you're going to be wanting to take so many other Mons over him. Um, it's kind of just there to be a Fairy type. I mean, it still can do, you know, T-Wave, and you can try and do some uh, things with it. I I'm just not sure what. I'll probably have to look more into that. But it this is a position where it's more about the player rather than the team itself. Um, he's got... Like you said, his schedule, he got through the hard part now. Let's see what he can do. If he can beat Manila after this, he he's just going to keep climbing, climbing after that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. It just comes down to, the, I think this next week is probably one of the most important weeks for him. And the momentum will shift based on that. Yeah. Uh, honestly, yeah. Like, even ignoring the free, like, moving forward, like, uh, after this bundle matchup, it's... Yeah, uh, you brought up a good point. His he has no good ice resist. Um, his his only genuine ice resist is the Greninja, and you don't want that as your you know taking hits, right? So you're a lot of these times, especially a lot of Pokemon that can, a lot of Pokemon just get an ice move, right? You see, they can just click an ice beam. Some Pokemon aren't even Terra Ice. So when you don't have an actual ice resist and you you kind of do a run yourself. I think it might, in my opinion, if we're talking purely by draft, I think get rid of the Ogre Pond for a Pokemon that can take an ice hit, even if it is weak to freeze dry, even if it's another water type, something that can take an ice hit is probably very important. You you know, your steel type being neutral to ice is not the best, but that's, you know, Iron Shreds is too good to say anything really negative about it. Other than that, I mean, you might be able to just outskill your opponents with even with that ice weakness. Um, so I don't know how much of it really matters, seeing you know how good you've been playing and prepping. It's all nitpicking, to be honest. Moving on. No, <laughs> to the Scarborough Sceptiles. It is a cold day in PBO Hell um, when we're ranking Geo this high. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm but not. In all seriousness, he's had... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's had an interesting early schedule. He he lost to Orlando, still trying to figure out his team. I, honestly, even though it's a minus five, that game was close, right? Like, you know, if, it, if that was a Scarf Spectator, if he played better around the uh, Mian Shao, with the Mian Shao into the Gouging Fire... Like, th that was a game, even though it looked like a minus five, Geo could definitely have won, but I'm sure he's hold this, heard this a million times before. After that, he seemed to have bounced back, right? He beat, he, his, he is win is the only win, uh, only snow point, the only loss snow point has occurred up to this point. So Geo is currently beat, you know, a strong player. Then he had a dominant win against Cherry Hill, a, you know, a the ninth seed that could go higher because their potential is so good. And yeah, they're really making this double ghost dark type um, uh, work. I mean, they have an unconventional first three picks, but a really strong first three, right? Like they have Spectre, Dragapult, Tinglu. Like I don't know if I need to explain to you why that's so good. It is, you know, the, and the two ghost types they share two different niches. They, you know, and and they both are very well covered by well the fattest horse in town of Tinglu. You're kind of just very happy um and then you have good support mons to cover it you have tinkaton and tentacruel to kind of play your mid grounds me and show to get chip that can regen fortress as a uh, secondary spinner alongside tentacruel and then you know honestly i'm not the biggest fan of arboliva and wiggly tough as your terra captains but i'm sure geo doing geo things you will make it work and you have a very very important schedule so your next two weeks are hard you have Syracuse and Charleston, but afterwards you have some, depending on how, you know, their level of play, you have, de de you know, debatably some easier matchups in Salt Lake, Tottenham, and Clarenbrook. You know, you, 
Totem could show up, uh, Kong Book could be just still dominant, so that's still time as can tell. But for the time being, in your near sights, you have two strong opponents ahead of you. If you take it week by week, you play to your strengths, I'm sure you can win. Um, it is just, I'm not going to try and predict how you're going to win, or if you're going to win, or why you'll win, or lose, for that record, for the matter. But, um... You definitely have one of the most geo teams of all time, and that's coming from a muck. But yeah, you have had good play. I mean, you this week is going to matter a lot. I, th I think I can't remember what the game of the week is on top of my head, but uh, it's, it's this one. Mine and his as well. Yeah, as... It, that makes sense. <laughs> there's the other there's two of them in uh, Sunset. I forget what the gotcha. other one was because it just didn't involve me. So I, I kind of oh, zoned and, in out of it. Yeah, I, I get it now. PPO, we believe in the vein. Now, um, um, Cherry Hill versus Clonbrook. I believe that. Yep, yeah, that, that makes sense because it's it's a very important turning point game for both of them. But yes, I, I genuinely think all eyes are going to be on this matchup because these are two, you know, teetering like top five players, really wanting to make a name for themselves, show that they can breach the top three and maybe become the top one. Both of you guys have been playing really well. Obviously, this is not pickums. Uh, but if it was, I would I would say it's a question mark, question mark, question mark to a question mark, question mark, question mark as they win. And that's not to say anything about your level of play or even his. It is just any game with Geo, you roll the dice and whatever it lands on is, is, is the result. That is the strength of Geo. He can lose to a person who's never played Pokemon before and then just beat the world champion. That man is an enigma to us all and will probably make us all age five years in this battle and Syracuse 10. Oh, most definitely. I'm already going on 56 throughout the season. <laughs> That's at least how I feel. Um, yeah. It's, it's going to be a, uh, who, who gets to choke first matchup? Yeah. Who, cho who chokes more? Um, like you said, the, the scary, the scary combo of Spectre, Dragapult, Tinglu. Um, if, if you aren't ready for this, if you don't have a normal type, you don't have uh, a resist to the ghost in the dark, but definitely the ghost. You're not gonna have a fun time against uh, this team. Mm -hmm. You need a strong. You need a really good normal type. <laughs> Granted, everyone everyone keeps telling me he runs weird sets. So maybe maybe I might get surprised by something. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't had the pleasure of facing Geo yet. We'll see. I wouldn't call it a pleasure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you said earlier, the ter Terra captains are a little, you know, question mark, question mark, question mark. Um. Wigglytuff is one of those things that is just kind of like, it's a mon. It does a lot of things. It's a Gen 1 normal mon, so it gets every single move that yep. you could ever think of. Um, so um, he's got Tinkaton, which Tinkaton is the best type, but the you know most middest stats around. It still can do a lot of different things. Can still threaten with its hammer, T wave, a lot of things. He's got a lot. Of, he's got the static on the Zapdos. Um, He's got the uh, grounded poison. Got the T spikes. Uh, I'm the, ch the spirit of Ben is taking over me and just wants to crap on the fortress pick. But that's just you know me being possessed here. Uh, it's 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 a good team with, but it's also one note at the same time. If you know what, it's hard to prep against Spectre or Dragapult. But it, but because you have the Spectre, you almost kind of expect the Dragapult to be physical. But it doesn't have to be because you do have the Ting Lu as well as well as the Man Shao, so you can try and run double special ghost. Um, mm -hmm. Spectre is one of those mons where what it does, it does better than anyone else, shooting off uh, shadow balls with nasty plots. But that's kind of all it does. Um, using it last season, if you know how to use it, you'll be you'll be doing great, which was what Geo has been doing. He's probably he's using it way more effective than I was last season. Um, if you don't know how to use it. It's it's kind of more of a liability than anything, but he seems to have it down pat. It's going to be definitely a scary matchup of just kind of we'll see who can pull out the weirdest stuff to trick the other and, you know, cheese it out. It's going to be probably one of the cheesier matchups to see if what he can. Yep. But he has a team that if you're not prepped for it, he he's he's can continue taking dubs all the way through the rest of the season. Absolutely. Moving on to the top three, we have some real, real meat here. Uh, Orlando Magikarp's Nico. 
This is a Gouging Fire team. Um, this is a draft that I'm not the biggest fan of, and I don't believe a lot of people are. However, it is a Nico draft. It is a draft that, for all intents and purposes, has all the pieces that you need, and I mean, it's kind of... It has all the pieces you need, and even though it may not have the best cohesion, it has enough, right? And it has enough win conditions, right? You, you you set up, you try to prep and plan around Gouging Fire so much, and then you lose to Selkir Garknackle. You try to min-max both of them, and then Slow King and Clefable slowly wall you out. And then, you know, you, you try to handle the hazards that Samurott brings, and Glimit may come and bring. And, oh, Terra, Rotom Frost, one of the, you know, a really strong Terra Captain comes in, or Tornadus catches you off guard. And, oh, I'm going to use Intimidate to try and lower Gouging Fire or some other kind of move of that sort. No, Tornadus now has a Defiant buff. And while I'm not the biggest fan of Tornadus, I do think using it with a bunch of physical attackers like the Gouging Fire Scizor and Samurott, it does make Tornadus as a Defiant Mon really good. But on that note, I do think it's spe his special threat is Rotom Frost. And basically Rotom Frost alone, outside of maybe an Air Slashing... Hammerot. Um, but that's the negatives of his draft. I think, you know, he's very well aware how we're not the biggest fans of it. It's Gouging Fire. It has a secondary win condition of Garganackle. It has pivoting with Scizor Slowking. It has Intimidate and other nonsense and deterrent from Tornadus. You have a really good uh, Terra Captain Rotom Frost. Like, it's all this. Like, you have the utilities, you have the power, and you are the player to make it work. You beat Geo 5 0 you lost to Kuma, and you, then you beat Metro. I mean, you, you're basically winning against the players you're expected to win, and unfortunately, you know, it's it's a 50-50, and maybe if you would have won against Kuma, but you lost to Kuma, which isn't something to be upset about. You could reasonably win the, every single game for the rest of the season, Toronto, Cherry Hill, Snowpoint will be your next like major contention, Manila, then Salt Lake. You could finish maybe 7-1, 6-2 once again. You're doing really good. You, you you know, you are a Gouging Fire team. Gouging Fire is a robbery Pokemon on the worst of days, and the best of days is a Pokemon with that when you put in with some extreme skill, like the you know, that you possess will just win the game just because you're Nico. I think you're just a, you're you are going to probably bully this league if you are uh, keep going unchecked. Um, one thing to touch up on: he does have the chili reception plus the blizzard combo, which can yep. help set up the Rotom Frost, which makes this even nastier. Um, being yep. Terra as well, you know, hitting Terra blizzards. Mm -hmm. It's if whoever who has an ice weakness, um, which I think he's got coming up, no point, uh, has a big ice weakness. We talked about Cherry Hill as well, um, can get pretty hurt by ice as well. Um, so he's got two matchups back to back where that Rotom Frost is going to be pretty, pretty nasty. But this man has made Tornadus Incarnate, which I think in almost every single video I've heard Ben, I've heard Za, everyone's just doesn't like this mon it is currently the kill tied for kill leader with spectrier in sunset and <laughs> that's what mr nico here has done is made this thing the the kill kill leader in sunset a mon that everyone has crapped on and he's just making it work i mean flying is just one of those types where it's just if you don't have the right mons to resist it it's gonna hurt and even then the, a lot of the mons that do resist flying it's still still gonna chip big chip um like you said it's a gouging fire team gouging goat can always just you know be the win con you it's always gonna be back there so even though you're trying to maybe kill kill the tornadoes the garganackle the slow king you gotta in the back of your head preserve what you need to preserve to beat that gouging fire and mm -hmm. you might end up misplaying because you're trying to keep stuff where you might end up having to sack which then he just wins without even gouging fire taking the field. But if you, you know, go one for one trades here, there, here, there, gouging fire is going to win the 1v1 with whatever's left over or the 2v1, and he's just going to sweep. Um, it's it's one of those team, you know, it's gouging fire is just one of those mons where it's always going to be in the back, similar to like Iron Valiant. If you lose the mons that can counter gouging fire, Iron Valiant, those kind of mons, uh, Iron Bundle, 
if you don't have the right mons to counter them, you're just gonna you just you just get checked. It's a it's yep. it's a it's a matchup check pretty much. I mean, he's got the insane amount of how uh, hazards. Um, I don't know how often he's actually gonna bring Glamet. Um, if he does though, you obviously got the T spikes and the Stealth Rock. You got Hammerot with the the best spike setter. Um, you could go bulky. You could go special. You could do a whole lot of things with Hammerot. Um, I feel like everyone craps on Toad Scroll and kind of rightfully so because just it's Toad Scroll. But you kind of need need a uh, you know kind of need a ground type here and it kind of fills that slot. Um, Clefable, Glow King, or not Glow King, Clefable and Slow King, just being that those big walls. Um, Garganak always putting pressure. It on paper I understand why a lot of people don't like this draft, but everything yep. has its place here, and he's been using it well. And he can, uh, with the kind of schedule he has going forward, um, Nico has a clear pathway up to Stargazer if if he keeps this uh, same kind of performance up. Yep. And we will be welcoming him the best we can. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. I'll be I'll be wishing the worst, but that's just because he's in my division. <laughs> and moving on to top two, uh, we had a fall from I would call it Grace. You know, it's only from one to two. I will. Um, he, he, again, another person with... Uh, so his first week was against Caleb. You know, to, uh, Tokyo decided to introduce Caleb, uh, New York Nickets, to the Sunset Division by giving a quick 5-0 de defeat. Um, then had a really strong opponent in Nico, Orlando Magikarps, and beat him um, in a back-and-forth game. It was very impressive from Kuma. And then lost to Snow Points. I don't think he himself even expected it. Um... That was a game that uh, I feel like Kuma is kind of just a bit miffed about. Um, and so kind of put him down below to second place. But even with that, I mean, without completely and utterly just glazing Kuma, it's it's a good team. He has Prankster T-Wave, he has Cinderace, probably a, 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 the Turtle, I, one of the best uh, Terror Captains in Zerud. Metagross, Glass, like, his team is the team. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, even eight really good mons. Polyrath is a stable mod, so he's playing a good nine, ten man roster. I don't think any, I don't think there's a, uh, and there's nothing I can super say that is absolutely negative. He's been number one, I think, since, pre since before the first week. He's been number one up until now. He only going down to number two because Snowpoint is really showing a case for himself that he is here to play, and he took a shot at, the, at Kuma and hit. Um, yeah, I mean, Kuma is dude. It it is just showing the difference between him and most of the division, and I think looking at his strength of schedule, he should get three wins back to back, pretty soundly, unless some. Something crazy happens, you know, t Toronto or Totem could show up. Um, but yeah, like, as far as things are concerned, I'm sure he'll reclaim his number one spot, uh, you know, all things considered. And that number seven and week eight, seven and week eight are going to be very impor important, like, wake up games for him before playoffs. I think, you know, Kuma has nothing to worry about. Me and Ben went over a lot of his team during the pick'em, so I'll kind of spare my time here a little bit on that. Um, he probably has two of the more uh, offensively deadly captains, uh, Terra captains. Mm -hmm. I think this is rude as uh, as showing out to be one of the better Terra captains. Um, he's got Terrapagos. He got the skill check mon of Metagross. Uh, it's it's a very strong strong team, um, and it's just overall well built. We'll see what if he can keep up the the pace and the hype that's behind him. Um, he's got Tottenham, which I think once again, it can be a tough, tough matchup, but we'll see where he goes these next three weeks. If he can, can, can win all these three weeks, he'll stay up top and keep that hype. But I feel like if he takes one or two L's in the next two to three weeks, it could, you know, deflate this hype. And when you got all that pressure built on you, it might, you know, we'll see what he can do, but he's got the hype around him. Let's see if he can live up to it. I agree completely. I don't think we need to stay here much longer. <laughs> and time for numero uno. The Charleston Chestnuts. Why don't you uh, start us off? So, the last uh, 
last of the members to fall down from Stargrazer. He's trying to reclaim a spot, climbing back up um, to get there. And so far, so he has, you know, been just winning almost every single match pretty handily. Um, he's He might win by two this week and then one next week just to keep up the pattern. I hope he does, <laughs> just to be 5-4-3-2-1 in terms of differential. Um, and then I'd like him Didn't to go... You. I'd like him to go negative one, they they give two, the negative three, but you know yep, that's, yep, yep, yep. that that'd be just for the memes. Um, you know, me and Ben talked a lot about this team. It's real. We really like this team. Um, Volby, you obviously being on there was uh, was a big hype moment. It's got the grounded grounded poison. Um, An amorous T is a great Terra captain. I don't see Tauros coming much. I'll be honest, um, but everything else on his team is really really good. He's got the Roaring Moon, Lando T, and Polion. Uh, core big bulky core that can all be offensive at the same time and bulky same with an amorous yep. t can be bulky can be offensive so it's all it's gonna be a week by week basis all of these sets yep. can be nasty cryogonal is a very slept on mon i feel like um he's just got an overall where i said tottenham has a swiss army knife this is a swiss army machete uh, <laughs> in terms of it's 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 kind of it's bulkier it's a little bit slower but it's going to be hitting just as hard as well. Yep. While I wouldn't, uh, I'm not. I'm not saying this to discount uh, any of his Pokemon's move sets because a lot of these Pokemon do have crazy move sets or move sets you need. While I would think, uh, and you know, as you said before, instead of like you know, uh, uh, Swiss Army knife versus machete, while the Swiss Army knife team um, has a lot of utility in their move sets and what they can bring, this machete of a team, it, it, it's stats, right? Like you can. One week can have bring six Pokemon and in one way, and then the next week bring the exact same six Pokemon completely differently, different stats. Maybe it's not physical this time, but now it's special. Maybe it's instead of setup, it's support, and instead of support, it's now your breaker. There's so many Pokemon that can just do different roles. Enam can come one week as your tower captain, and the next week is now just there to absorb hits as absorb, like maybe as an AV Mon. And Tauros is actually now taking the show if he does come. Um, there's so many Pokemon, like even Entei, like just because of the raw stats that a lot of these Pokemon have, you know, um, Landorus can come physical or special or utility or wall or whatever. You, It is really hard to truly predict anything that Don's team is going to do, because even if you know exactly which six months, he Don can tell you from the start, hey, these are the six months I'm bringing. That still doesn't help you narrow down what are the sets, what are the EVs, is there physical, special, what are they going? The only, only thing that is true for Don's team is that Volbeat is going to be a pain in the ass. Outside of that, like, Roaring Moon, yeah, sure, you expect Roaring Moon to come in and, like, rob a, rob a win or something like that. But maybe it's not a breaker or a sweeper or whatever. Maybe it's coming in to just click U-turn and knock off and just really just... Um, uh, be a disturber. Like it's just actually supposed to disturb the enemy team to let other Pokemon like Lando or Herox or whatnot to do its job. It's really hard to truly tell what is Don's game plan with this team. And while the strength of schedule hasn't been the strongest, it hasn't been absolutely just a week. And you know they might they they're gonna have an interesting match up into Metro Boombers. I think it's going to be Boombers trying to really show themselves. But after. After week four, we'll really get into the meat and potato. How much does Don want to go back to Stargazer? How strong is this team? And will Don stay on the top for the rest of the season? Going against Geo, going against Syracuse, going against Kuma. And who knows how Kuma, uh, how Caleb is going to show up at this point. All in all, I mean, nothing but kudos for Don. I I wouldn't be surprised if he just keeps his spot um, at nice and warm for the upcoming weeks. But yeah, he's playing really well. Um, I think the, he, he, you know, he had a bit of a sh tougher showing against uh, Selendids, but I don't think that's a that was a dawn mishap. More so, Selendids, you know, just coming more to form, showing herself. But yeah, that in and of itself is the Thunderdome that is um, Sunset. I expect all these power rankings to change next week. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, well, we'll revisit it when we get there because it's it's mark 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 all the positions now. They might end up changing, and I promise you, by the end of the season, no one's no one's gonna be staying in the same spot for very long. Maybe Charleston at that, but even then, he just took the first spot. Um, yep. 
it, it, it's going to be the craziest toss-up division. Any team can go any which way. Um, anyone really can make playoffs. It's not really everyone's so close skill-wise um, and team-wise. This is truly the Thunderdome where you either make it and get prove yourself to Stargazer, you 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 can't keep up the pace, you fall back down to Neon, or you just stay in the Thunderdome and keep keep trying to earn your spot. I mean, yeah, there's a reason why, comparatively to the other pickums, we talk more about the teams themselves and how they've been shipping up, and less so about the play. And that is because all of you have not been playing, like, horribly. Like, even the bottom of the teams, you've all been doing well, and sometimes it, it is really just about showing up at the right time that really matters. Syracuse, like, you know, he, he brought it up the fir at the very beginning. He was the first person to mention it, the Thunderdome, and I couldn't more agree. Like, the, this is... That is the most apt description of Sunset. It is all we have to go off of is is basically your teams. You, you guys are all playing well in your well enough, like either well in your comfort, well in your strengths. None of you are showing any exorbitant weaknesses outside of Geo being Geo, but I wouldn't be surprised if he six O's and then goes O six the next two weeks. Um, with all that said, um, I've been Sunday Sites Weekends. I've been the Syracuse Snorlax. And he's been the Professor Soaring, uh, you know, the commissioner of PBO. Hello. And we'll and see I... you all next time. Yes.